their top military leader. And now Iran tonight saying it is effectively pulling out of the nuclear deal. Martha Raddatz on the streets of Tehran tonight. Thousands of U.S. servicemen and women on their way to the Middle East, members of the 82nd Airborne already landing. And the major development in Iraq tonight, parliament there voting to expel American troops from Iraq. Pressure growing on President Trump. Where is the evidence of an imminent attack? Why kill? Why now? What he said when asked today, John Carl at the White House. The other major news this Monday night, the impeachment showdown and former National Security Advisor John Bolton now revealing he will testify if subpoenaed by the Senate. Mary Bruce with late reporting. Panic in Puerto Rico tonight. Images coming in now after a 5.8 earthquake. Aftershocks reported tonight with reporters on air. The fast-moving storm about to sweep into the east. It'll affect tomorrow's commute. Harvey Weinstein in a New York courtroom then hit with new sex assault charges in Los Angeles. Two women, the same hotel, one night after the other. The catastrophic wildfires in Australia. Ginger Z is there tonight. And the fight to save the koalas. And if you're a Jeopardy fan, the category, we hope you'll ace. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to be back with all of you after the new year. And there is plenty to get to tonight. A very tense start to this new year as tonight American B-52 bombers are now on the move. And thousands of U.S. troops are being deployed to the Middle East as Iran now vows revenge. It all comes, of course, after the death of Iran's top military commander in a U.S. drone strike. And these are the images tonight. Millions in mourning in the streets, the funeral procession in Tehran today. Angry and emotional messages from the Iranian people for the U.S., Iran's supreme leader weeping at the funeral. Tonight, those calls for revenge and chants in Iran's parliament of death to America. Iran effectively now pulling out of the nuclear deal. Tonight, President Trump vowing to answer any retaliation with force. The president speaking of 52 Iranian sites, including sites of cultural significance. And thousands of U.S. troops, many already arriving in the Middle East. You will hear from nervous families right here at home. ABC's chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raddatz leads us off from inside Iran tonight. In Iran today, an ocean of people taking to the streets. More than a million mourners, many dressed in black, grieving the death of General Qasem Soleimani. Numbers not seen since the funeral of an Ayatollah in the 1980s. Soleimani's coffin carried high above their heads today. This procession so packed you can barely move, but the emotion is everywhere. People have a very strong message for America. They are chanting death to America. Others here burning the stars and stripes. Inside the funeral service, tears from Iran's supreme leader. And amid the grief, calls for revenge. Trump made a big mistake. He killed our hero. Revenge must happen, and it is certain. What kind of revenge do you want? Uh, anything. Iran promises that is coming. Over the weekend, a red flag symbolizing a declaration of war raised above a mosque. This morning, the Iranian government announcing they are suspending commitments to the 2015 nuclear deal. President Trump walked away from months ago. Iran now abandoning limits on enriching uranium and stockpiling nuclear fuel. <laughs> Members of the Iranian parliament also chanting death to America. Officials saying retaliation would target the U.S. military. President Trump warns that if there is retaliation, he has 52 Iranian targets in his sights, some, he says, at a very high level and important to Iran and the Iranian culture. Targeting cultural sites is considered a war crime. Today, Iran's president firing back, tweeting those who refer to the number 52 should also remember the number 290, the number of people killed when the U.S. accidentally shot down an Iranian passenger plane in the 80s. Rouhani's message to Trump, never threaten the Iranian nation. So let's get right to Martha Raddatz, who's with us live tonight from Tehran. And Martha, you and I have both reported from inside Iran. And the Iranian people have often told us that, that they have felt the U.S.-led sanctions for years. But today I noticed the crowds there with you uh, noting something very different, calling for revenge. And the Iranian government under tremendous pressure tonight to act. 
They are, David. The emotion was so high today here, David. We saw many people weeping, but it was mixed with anger and a real desire for revenge and anger clearly aimed at President Trump. David? Martha Raddatz leading us off from Tehran tonight. Martha, thank you. And as I mentioned at the top, the U.S. military on the move tonight. Six B-52 bombers are reportedly being relocated to the Indian Ocean tonight. And the first of nearly 4,000 new troops have already arrived in the Middle East. And another troubling development tonight, the U.S. and NATO this evening now saying they are halting the fight against ISIS for now to protect themselves. ABC senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel from inside Iraq tonight. Tonight, the faces of the young American servicemen and women now landing in Kuwait. 3,500 from the 82nd Airborne. Part of a rapid deployment in the growing crisis with Iran. <laughs> This comes despite the president's pledges to draw down from the region. The plan is to get out of endless wars, to bring our soldiers back home. The Iraqi parliament, angry at the killing of Soleimani on their soil, voting to kick U.S. troops out of the country. It's non-binding, but shows how high tensions are. The president's hit back after repeatedly sanctioning Iran. He's now threatening to sanction the Iraqis too, saying... If they do ask us to leave, if we don't do it in a very friendly basis, we will charge them sanctions like they've never seen before. And now, more fallout from the assassination. America putting the fight against ISIS in Iraq and Syria on hold, so they can protect their own forces and bases instead. David, travelling to the Iraqi desert just months ago, miles from the Syrian border, to see the ISIS threat. I took note that while we were flying out here, you could hear the pilots talking about vehicles off in the distance, right. completely aware of really every isolated scene on the way out. Yeah, it's just a reminder that this is uh, ISIS's author. Tonight, anxious family members like 23-year-old Justice Palco's cousin worried for other members of his family. Extremely difficult for the family, but extremely difficult for his new wife and his mom. And so let's get to Ian Panel with us from Erbil, Iraq tonight, with U.S. troops pausing that battle against ISIS you speak of. I know there's real concern about leaving ISIS fighters now unwatched, not monitored in this very volatile region. Yeah, I think that's right. This is a highly dangerous moment. If those extremists go on the offensive, the men like these ISIS prisoners here in northeast Syria who said that they would attack, well, now with American and NATO troops standing to one side, there are only Iraqi troops standing in their way. And the last time that happened, the caliphate emerged. David? A lot we're watching tonight. Ian Panel, our thanks to you as well. And at the White House this evening, increasing pressure on President Trump. Where is the evidence of the, quote, imminent attack that the president and the administration used to justify the deadly drone strike? Tonight, the president was asked about the evidence and how he answered. Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. Amid rising tensions, Democrats tonight are demanding the White House make public the intelligence they used to justify taking out Qasem Soleimani. Knowledge of the actions and justification should be shared with the American people in a timely manner. President Trump has declared Soleimani was killed to thwart an imminent threat. Soleimani was plotting imminent and sinister attacks on American diplomats and military personnel, but we caught him in the act. But there are questions about just how imminent the threat was. In an interview today, conservative talk radio host Rush Limbaugh asked the president to explain why he ordered the strike when he did. Could you explain to people why what you've done here makes us safer, why it was necessary, and why what we did was right? He should have been taken out a long time ago, and we had a shot at it, and we took him out. And we're a lot safer now because of it. But the president made no mention of an imminent threat. This evening, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff told reporters the intelligence was, quote, compelling, adding... Did it exactly say who, what, when, where? No. But he was planning, coordinating, and synchronizing significant combat operations against U.S. military forces in the region, and it was imminent. So let's get to John Carl live at the White House tonight. John, you know Democrats say they should have been informed about plans to kill Soleimani. The House now planning to vote on a war powers resolution this week to try to limit the president's ability to a wage war on Iran. And the administration is now preparing to brief Congress on what exactly the intelligence was. David, on Wednesday, there will be briefings for the full House and the full Senate on that intelligence. But those will be classified briefings, 
and closed to the public. Still unclear when the public will be told or even if the public will be told about the intelligence behind that attack. All right, John Carl, our thanks to you as well tonight. Meantime, we do have new reporting this evening from Africa, where three Americans were killed in a terror attack there over the weekend. Al-Shabaab militants overran a key military airfield in Kenya, where U.S. forces are supporting African troops in their fight against terror. Al-Shabaab posting these images of their flag next to burning planes. Six aircraft were damaged. Among the dead, Army Specialist Henry Mayfield from Illinois. He was just 23. Also among the dead, two Defense Department contractors. And all of this tonight amid what could be a major development in the impeachment showdown. Former National Security Advisor John Bolton now saying he is prepared to testify in the Senate trial if he's subpoenaed. So let's get right to Mary Bruce tonight. She's live up on the Hill. And Mary, why did we hear this from Bolton today? Well, David, it's unclear why Bolton is making this move now. It does come, though, as he is writing a book. And sources tell us that Bolton did try to give the Republican leader in the Senate a heads up, knowing that this surprise offer would shake up the impeachment fight here. Bolton has critical firsthand knowledge of the president's actions, and his team says that he could testify to meetings and conversations with the president that have not yet been made public. Democrats here have been demanding to hear from Bolton, and tonight they feel that this offer strengthens their case for witnesses. You're, you're a veteran on the Hill, Mary. How likely is it, though, Bolton will testify that witnesses will be called? Well, David, this certainly could increase the pressure on Republican leader Mitch McConnell, especially if key Republicans begin to say that they want to hear from Bolton directly. But so far, Mitch McConnell is not budging, while tonight Democrats say that refusing to call key players like Bolton amounts to a cover-up. David. All right, Mary Bruce live on the Hill tonight. Mary, thank you. And the other major news this Monday night, that earthquake rocking Puerto Rico, the 5.8 quake striking, striking as people I slept, mean, damaging I mean, homes, uh, knocking out power and uh, threatening uh, landslides. It is the latest challenge to the island, still reeling from devastating hurricanes two years ago. Here's ABC's Victor Akendo tonight. Tonight, Puerto Rico rocked by a 5.8 earthquake. In this neighborhood, houses cracked, shaken right off their foundations. Power poles snapped, stretching across the street, and look at this home. The top floor collapsed, pancaking both cars parked below. It was one of the strongest quakes to ever hit the U.S. territory, causing small landslides on this highway. Drivers forced to avoid boulders during their morning commute. Officials say tremors have been hitting the area since late December. The quake striking at 6.32 a.m. local time, less than 10 miles off the southwest coast, near the major city of Ponce, a place we visited a few months ago. Still so vulnerable, more than two years since Maria. Rain coming, a lot of water. A lot of water comes right inside the house. <laughs> more than 13 aftershocks hit today. <laughs> this station live on the air during one of them. Despite the damage, thankfully, no injuries have been reported. Officials say that people on the southwest side of the island need to remain on high alert. Puerto Rico sits along the border of two tectonic plates, so earthquakes are a way of life there. The best advice for anyone whose house was damaged, wait for an engineer to clear it before returning inside. David? Thinking about everyone in Puerto Rico tonight, Victor, or thanks to you. And we turn now to the fast-moving storm about to sweep into the east, set to affect tomorrow's commute, and a new series of storms slamming the west. Meteorologist Rob Marciano tracking it all for us. Hey, Rob. Hi, David. Several systems racing across the country. We'll start with that pulse that's going to bring some snow in the morning. It'll be in uh, Charleston, West Virginia, and then in Roanoke, D.C. by the evening commute. Temperature's kind of warm, so I think mostly a slushy snow maybe accumulating on the roadways and getting into New York as well. The West is beginning slammed in several more storms. Three of them lined up for the Pacific Northwest, so more rain and mountain snow there. The second one is going to dig down into the Intermountain West Wednesday, Thursday. That's going to be the more potent one, bringing rain, and I think two days of severe weather, both Friday and Saturday for the South, and and then eventually a wintry mix with some heavy rain into the northeast over the weekend. David? Rob Marciano tonight. Rob, thank you. Harvey Weinstein was in a New York courtroom today, and then he was hit with new sex assault charges in Los Angeles. Two women there, the same hotel, one night right after the other. Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis. Just hours after the former Hollywood heavyweight hobbled into this New York courthouse for the start of his sexual assault trial. This trial is to show the jury, the state of New York, and the world that there's more to this than, than they would like everyone to believe. Harvey Weinstein slapped with new charges today in Los Angeles. The defendant used his power and influence to gain access to his victims and then committed violent crimes against them. The DA accuses Weinstein of raping one woman in her L.A. hotel room, then the next night allegedly sexually assaulting another woman in a hotel suite. Mr. Weinstein, sir. All just days before appearing here.